My name is Kevin Varga. I am 18 years old and I have glioblastoma. And it started in my spine, which only 5% of glioblastoma start in the spine and the other 95% start in the brain, which is one part of the reason why it's so rare. The reason I went to get checked was because in summer 2019, I started having back pain when I got back from a hike, a week long hike. I started having back pain and it got pro progressively worse. And I thought I pulled the muscle, but it just kept getting worse and worse. And uh, eventually, quite a few months after, the doctors didn't know what was wrong. I went into the doctors quite a few times and nobody really knew the problem. We never really got an MRI until it was in December, beginning of December of 2019, we got at MRI and uh, it showed that I had a seven centimeter tumor inside of my spinal cord. I had surgery to remove the tumor on December the 13th and the surgery did not quite go as planned. They weren't able to remove all of the tumor because they realized that it was a very aggressive form of cancer and they wouldn't be able to remove it all. So they wanted to keep my spinal cord in somewhat tact, which gives me mobility so I can keep walking. Um, and then on December 17th, once they got the biopsy back, uh, they found out that it was a very aggressive cancer, glioblastoma, which is a stage four, um, grade four brain cancer. After I had the surgery and after I was diagnosed with glioblastoma, the doctors told me right there that there's not much hope and there's no real survival chance. Um, there's treatment that'll help slow down the cancer and and help with everything like that, but there's in the end result, it won't help enough. I started immediately after um, surgery for radiation. As soon as my scar healed on my spine, they immediately sent high, high radiation into my spine and to try to attack as much of the tumor as possible. And you only can do it for one month. So I was on a 30 day radiation um, table. Every day I would go in to get radiation and it would only be for like five, 10 minutes. And uh, it made me feel super sick after, but it's not, not, not the end of the world. I knew that it would help. And after radiation, the doctor sent me home and I was able to go back to school for a couple weeks and live somewhat of a normal life in my wheelchair. About six months after in June, I could tell that my muscles were getting a bit weaker and it was harder to walk. Um, I knew that that was not a good sign and I woke up the next morning of graduation with extreme pain in my stomach and back, knowing that something was up. So I went to the doctor in the hospital and sure enough, we got an MRI and the cancer did grow. And then after that, after we got the result, um, there was one other chemo that could help my cancer. It was really a shot in the dark. We gave it a chance and uh, it actually ended up working for about six months until about January, 2020. Uh, I had the same symptoms, harder to walk. I couldn't stand up anymore. Uh, some pain and go back to the doctor and hospital and sure enough the cancer grew again This time unfortunately, there's no more treatment options available. So the doctors sent me home and wish me the best of luck The lowest point in my cancer journey um, Has to be being in a wheelchair because I'm a young athletic male and it's it's painful seeing my friends play basketball and play sports that I used to play when I can't do it anymore It's harder than even the cancer itself so if I were to pass, I would like my friends to remember me as someone who makes the most out of every situation and makes the most out of life and has a positive attitude regardless what they're going through. I recently started a bucket list with all my goals and adventures I want to do before I do pass. I already went on a helicopter ride and I've been dog sledding. I would still like to go skydiving and still want to hang out with friends and family and do as much cool things as possible before I do pass. Um, I'm trying not to look too far into the future. I'm living every day, day by day, given the circumstances. I don't want to look too far into the future and I want to deal with today today and worry about tomorrow tomorrow. At the end of the day, the doctors told me I would never be able to walk again. So who are they to tell me I have a year to live? I'm going to keep my head up high. I'm going to keep the same positive attitude that I have and it's going to take me a long way. I'm not done yet. <laughs>